Hello and welcome back to Mikey's Flytech. Today I will show you how we can build your own annunciator buttons for your glare wings. What I will design for 3D printing the Master Caution and Fire Warning buttons is first of all a box. And this box will contain four holes for routing through the legs of a 12 mm tactile switch and two posts which will hold two LEDs, red and yellow ones. On top of this box there will be a ring and this ring will prevent the whole box from sliding through the glare shield surface and stabilize it. And inside the box fits the button into and this button has holes to let the LEDs into it and a bigger hole where the cap of the tactile switch can be clamped in. On the top you will find a recess where the 3mm acrylic plate can be let in. And I designed a 6-pack annunciator which is also a box. You can see holes to mount two other tactile switches in and a bigger hole to let all the cables out. It also has a ring on the top to prevent it from sliding through the glare ring. Inside this annunciator there is a button and this is made from two parts, a bottom part which has some holes in it, two holes to clamp the caps of the tactile switches in, a bigger hole in the middle to let all the cables run through and two screw holes. On top of this there will be another part with uh, six um, chambers here where a single LED can be mounted in. These blocks here will hold the screw and you have also a small recess to let the acrylic sheet can mount it in here. There are also two holes here where a small tool can be pushed in to get the acrylic sheet out again. After printing all the needed parts, I cut out the clear acrylic plates for the six-pack switch. To make the colored faces of the buttons I bought two sheets of 3mm tinted acrylic. These are not as translucent as the acrylic plates I used when I made the EVIS panel. This was 30% translucent, these are only 7% translucent. But I think when I will mount two LEDs behind it this will be bright enough, especially when I light it up in a darkened cockpit. So first of all I will cut out all the needed plates. I want to try to make the cutout and engraving of these panels here in the same working step. It's not uh, like many other cockpit panels here which you have to cut out first then paint it and then engrave them. This panel here doesn't need to be painted and so I want to make this on my cutting surface here, my uh, sacrificial layer and to make sure that the axis of the CNC router are aligned correctly to this sacrificial layer here, I have placed an aluminum tape on the surface of this acrylic sheet here and this I will touch with a tool and so I can determine the surface at different places here on the acrylic plate. After the engraving step, the process stops automatically to let me change the tool for the cutout step. Mm -hmm. 
To make the engraving on these plates more visible, I will clean them first with some thinner. And then I have this uh, tinted white hard wax and I will rub it into the grooves so that I ensure that in every groove is enough of this wax. And then I will go over with a thinner again here to tighten the wax and let it dry. And then I will repeat the same step with some black wax with the master caution panels. The separately printed ring is glued onto the box of the annunciator. So after some weeks of modeling and printing and engraving and cutting, I want to share some things with you I've learned during this time. First of all, the method to glue this ring here on top of this button holder, um, I think it was uh, a good decision. And with this method, I don't need to print any support structures. If I would have printed this um, with the bottom on the printing surface, I would have uh, had to construct support structures around this ring here, up the whole size of this button holder here. And even if I would have turned it around, then I would have been in need for supporting structures for this bottom here. And so by slicing them in two pieces and printing them separately, I save material and even some printing time. The button here I have constructed in two parts and I thought it would be very tricky when I make this little edge here on the bottom part and this groove on the upper part and they will snap fit together. This worked out good at this piece. You can see they go anywhere here when they are stuck together. But printing this upper part here was really a mess. I had to make many tries to print this without any warping and I think it is because of the modeling here. There is only a thin wall around it and this doesn't stick to the printing bed very well. Though I'm still in the learning process when constructing and printing those things. So I think I will change the design a little bit and the part I will upload for you will have a flat bottom here and also a flat edge and you will be able to lay them on top of each other and then make two screws here through these holes and they will hold them in place. By the way, the screw holes here came out really well and they hold the screws good. And the last thing, the engraving of these little plates here, they came out good, but you have to make sure that the engraving is deep enough for the wax to hold inside here. My uh, yellow master caution button came out uh, good. The engraving was a little bit deeper, but on my red fire warning button, the engraving was not so deep. And when I cleaned the surface of, of this plate here, I ran in danger to clean out also the wax that was already in the engraving. So make the engraving a little bit deeper and you have not to worry about rubbing it out again. So now all the printed parts are together and I can go on with some filler and a little bit of paint. I widened the hose a little bit to let the button cap fit in 
and then I prepared everything for painting. Those of you who have watched my last panel engraving video may have seen that I have tightened the panels to my engraving surface with some double-sided tape. This holds really well, but it is a nightmare to loosen it again. And so one of you gave me a hint to another method, the tape and superglue method, I think they call it. And I want to show you what this is here. I will prepare two stripes of normal tape here. One I will place on my engraving surface and the other one will be on the panel I want to engrave. After that I will apply the liquid component of the glue to the panel and the spray component or the activator to this tape here. And then I will place these onto each other and press it until the glue has dried. And when I finish the engraving I just have to loosen this bottom tape here and this will go off really easy. With the plates tightened to the engraving surface, I can now use my homemade edge finder here to calculate the orientation of the plates to all the axes of the CNC. And here you can see what happens when the touch plate contact doesn't work properly. Ouch! A new tool and another try later it worked. After the paint has dried, these parts don't fit as easily together as they did before. And this is because they have some drops of paint running down uh, at the bottom of this part here. And there's only half a millimeter of gap between these parts. And so I will have to uh, refine this thing a little bit now. I will mount these 12mm tactile switches and I came across this idea when I saw one of Carl's last videos. I will link this video here for you. And the advantage of these buttons is they come with these small caps here. You can easily push the cap onto this button and also release it again. And I will mount the buttons into this button holders here and the cap will be pressed into this hole in the bottom of this inner part here. And it will fit in really tight and don't come loose. And then when I push these two parts together, they will click into each other and stay together without the need of modeling any holding mechanism here. And when I want to disassemble the button again, I will only have to pull at this inside part here and the cap will come off the tactile switch and stay still in this inner part here.
for many annunciators I have seen people are using two LEDs uh, on the left and right in those uh, small cabins here. And this is because the LEDs are emitting the light in a very small angle to the top. But these LEDs I will use here emit the light with a 120 degree angle and so I hope I will cover all this in place here with only one LED in the middle. I bent all the cadets together to construct a shared ground connection. I bought a bunch of different colors of 0.14 square millimeter cable here and this is because I'm planning to use different colors for different elements in the cockpit. For example, the black cable I will use for ground connections, the purple one for LEDs and the green one for switches. And so I hope it will be easier to determine uh, what a uh, cable will do or uh, will be routed to when you see it, for example, behind the overhead or the MIP. The length of the cable I will cut out now off from the spool will be enough to route the cable from the glare wing behind um, all the glare shield elements to the Arduinos that will control all the glare shield elements here. When you connect the legs of such a switch here, then you have to determine which leg combination will be activated when you push the switch. For example, with my switch here, the diagonal legs are activated when the switch is pushed. So I will solder the cables to one of each of these diagonal legs here. And the colored wire for the LEDs will be sorted to one of the longer legs of the LED, which is the anode. And then I will route the cable from the short pin to the other long leg of the other LED and a ground cable back to the Arduino. So maybe you couldn't see everything I've done here because it's very difficult not to have uh, the hand in the way here. So I want to explain it again to you. I come here to the long pin of the 
LED, which is the anode with a purple wire, and extend this via the short pin to the long pin of the second LED here. And then with a green switch wire, I come here to um, this first switch pin, and then I only have to connect these two, the switch pin and the last short LED pin with a black wire because they are sharing a common ground wire. And so I have a purple, a green and black ground wire going to this button here. Now it was time to install all the buttons to the glare wings. If you use the glare wing designs from my website, they should fit at once. Before I will reinstall the glare wings to the cockpit and connect them to the final Arduino, I will make a small test setup on my breadboard to test the function of all the lights and switches and the connection to Prosim. Here you can see the setup I've made. There are not all the connections I've made, but I will explain this here to you. First of all, we have the purple wires going to the LEDs of the master caution and the fire warning. There will be other purple wires to all these LEDs here in the six pack annunciators but I didn't want to um, visualize all of them here for you because you wouldn't see anything anymore then. So the green wires of the switches are connected with the switches of the fire button and the master caution button and also to the button of the six pack annunciator here. The LEDs must be connected with a resistor between the anode and the Arduino pin to prevent them from being destroyed by too much power. In ProSim, we will prepare all the needed offsets so that a Moby flight later will be able to read them out. You go again to config here and configuration and into the combined config tab. Everything we need here for the glare wings annunciators is here in the warning tab. There we have switches and indicators. And first of all, we want to assign the indicators. Here we have the fire warning one and two indicator, which is the captain and the first officer side. In my case, I have the captain of glare wing connected here. So I will use fire warning one and I switch this to FSUIPC 8 bit unsigned. And I will use a free offset here for testing. Remember, this will not be the offset I will use later, just for the testing case now and it will be 66D0. And I will use the first bit, which is the zero bit. And I can also assign the master caution LED from the captain's side, which is master caution one. I switch to FSU IPC 8-bit unsigned and also use the offset 66D0 zero and the next free bit, which is the one. And I will connect one LED of the six pack annunciator. I will test all the other LEDs later, but I think it's enough for you to get the idea behind this. And I will choose the warning of the electronics here. Again, the FSUIPC and the offset 66D0 and the next three bit, the two bit. Now I can also assign the switches. And for this, I will switch here to the switches tab. And there I have the fire warning one pushed a command. 
And this I will also connect with FSUIPC and type in our offset and the next free bit, the three. The same I will do with a master caution one pushed and the next free bit, the four and also the recall one pushed and the five. And this is all we have to do here in ProSim. In MobiFlight, I can first of all present you a new feature that was added in the last version here. And this is why I can show it in the English uh, language here to you. And you can switch the language under Extras Settings. And here you have the option to switch to your system default language or other languages here. But now back to our connected components. In the MobiFlight modules tab, we will add some new devices here. And so I say add device and this will be an LED output, which will be the captain fire warning. Remember, this won't be the namings I will use in my later project or in the cockpit. This is just for the test now. I will come to naming devices and pins in one of my following videos here. So I can choose the connected pin here. And this is the pin 53. And the next LED will be the Captain Master Caution connected to pin 52. And the next LED will be the, I call it Captain Elec. LED, I think you know which I mean, the one on the six pack annunciator. And this will be connected to pin 49 in my case. Now I have to add the buttons. And I add a button. I call this the Captain Fire button because it has to be a different named from the LED here and it is connected to pin 51. The next button, Captain Master Caution button will be connected to pin 50. And the last button, the Captain Six Pack, it is connected to pin 48. So I have defined six devices on my Arduino and I will upload this configuration to the Arduino. The upload has finished and now we can connect the offsets to these devices. We will start on the output tab here. Click in here and define a new output. Again, the captain fire warning, I say LED here. And we enter the offset 66 D zero. And the fire warning LED was connected to the third bit of this byte here. And this we can select by unchecking everything beside the three bit. And so we get this value here, which you also can enter directly. We switch over to the display tab, choose our module. I have only one mega connected at the time. And the type is pin. And here is already the first device, which can be connected here the captain fire warning. And this is what we are looking for. 
And now we can already test the connection by clicking on the test button and the fire warning LED on our glare wing goes on and off again. We go forward to the next output here, the Captain Master Caution LED. Again, I enter the offset and we have assigned this to the one bit. Switch over to the display tab, choose our module pin and the Captain Master Caution device and test this. And it works. The last LED will be the one from the six pack annunciator. I call this Captain Alec. And again, type in our offset. And this I have assigned to the two bit. And on the display, again, choose the module, the type, and the device. And when we click test, the Alec LED lights up. Now we come to the inputs, as we have the Captain Fire Warning button. We go to the input tab, choose the module and the device, the captain fire warning button. And the action type is an FSU IPC offset, which I enter here, 66D0. And the bit we use is the three bit. This is on press, so we will send the one value for making it on. And on release, we do the same in FSU IPC script, the offset and the bit. And send the value of zero. Now let me first do the second missing buttons here. All the buttons are defined now and don't forget to activate them here so that they all will be used later from ProSim and then we can click run for a first test. I have started ProSim panels to control the state of some LEDs and some switches and at this time the master caution button is already illuminated and so is the master caution button on my glare wing. And when I do a light test here, then the ALEC light should go on and so is the ALEC light going on on my glare wing. Let's control now the fire warning LED and for this test I have opened a second instance of the panel application and do a fire test here. And you can see the fire warning should be on and so is the fire warning LED on my glare wing. The function of the buttons can be easily tested in ProSim by changing to the warning tab. Here you can see the fire warning one, master caution and recall button. They are all off now, but when you click them, 
you can see they change the value to pushed and off again. So the fire warning button works and the same for the master caution button and also the recall button. finally everything is installed where it should be. It was a long process of changing the design from time to time and rethinking the electronics behind this and when I now think about this ring here around these buttons then I should have made this directly with a CNC cut out from an acrylic sheet so I would come out with a much smoother surface than this 3D printed surface here. But I think I can be very satisfied with the result as it is. And if you want to build your own annunciator buttons, then you can download the 3D printing file and also the DXF and SLCAM files from the member section of my website. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to stay informed about any upcoming new video from me. So I hope we'll see us soon back on the flight deck.